Welcome, everybody, to another edition of The Last Christian. My name is J.D. Williams here in East Texas, and joining me all the way from New York City is my co-host and my brother in Christ, Mr. David Paxton. How are you doing today, David? Hey, we're doing well. We're doing well over here. Looking forward to the uh, the end of the uh, pagan Gregorian year. <laughs> right. <laughs> Going into the month of, of Janus, the two-faced guy. Anyway, that's a whole nother can of worms to open up. Yeah. But yeah, for... For all intent and purposes, looking forward to a new year. Yeah, absolutely. This is the last broadcast of 2023. It's hard mm-hmm. to believe that uh, you know we've come this far. But uh, as as we get into the show today, you're going to understand. You know, uh, this is our wrap up of the week, and you know, really, it's kind of a wrap up of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, David, you mentioned that before we got going. You know, this is really the end of the year show, and that's very, very true. And when we started this year, we were talking about uh, how things were going to really start escalating in Israel and how uh, we might be looking at the beginning of possibly the Gog Magog War, possibly yep. the destruction of Damascus as is prophesied in Isaiah 17, 1. And guess what? We got Israel being attacked so far on three sides. Now, I know the media doesn't want to, want you to know that. The media is, you know, it's all about Gaza. Nope, it's not. You got Hezbollah, which is operating in the north of Israel. Got some reports on that. Uh, it's also uh, being invaded from the east as well by mm-hmm. the Houthis. So, uh, you're looking at three fronts right now. The Bible says there's going to be four and for the Gog and Magog War, that they will be attacked from the north, south, east, and west, and that no country, including the United States of America, comes to their, to their rescue, and that they're going to be fighting for themselves, and they're going to think they have no hope until God himself intervenes and takes care of the problem. Okay? Well, yeah, I mean, now, that's what we read. Yeah, now, so we have seen this come to fruition, really, in 2023. Israel was not under attack in 2022, not under a full-scale nope. war. Yeah, they've been attacked since the day they were created in 1945, or, or, no, 47, wasn't it? Um, yep. Uh, anyway, 48. 14, uh, 48, 48 yeah. what, whatever year it was, okay? They've been under attack since the attack. day they became a country. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about a full-scale war. It's been a long time since they had one of them in their 75-year history. So mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. anyway, um, as we go, but I think part of that is because um, no one really wanted to mess with Trump, you know, because uh, he he wouldn't uh, take the stuff that uh, the the current installment is not <laughs> is taking. Right. So right. Uh, yeah, yeah you can, so, so now they're like, hey, this guy's a clown. Let's just go in here because he's not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah, you can. You know, you can bash trump all you want to and i I know people got upset because he had some mean tweets okay well Mm -hmm. i can i can handle the mean tweets i really can you know i can handle yeah i'll take the dollar 69 uh, gas and the mean tweets (laughs) yeah i'll 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 take that any day of the week and twice on sundays you know i mean it's just Mm -hmm. the way you know but anyway that scares people for whatever reason and uh actually i think it's prophetic you know i mean we could we we could get deep into that if we yeah, we, we could really go deep into that if we wanted to. Um, I am going to, uh, again, this is the Week in Review, so I think uh, we need to start with with this. This is uh, out of Russia and the Ukraine. Now, before I play this clip, I want to make this clear to, to people that Russia is a very big country. Shock. Mm-hmm. Okay, this comes as a shock to a lot of people. But anyway, it's a very big country, and they're very well-armed, and they have a lot of people and a lot of military. And and they're the Scythians, and they were nasty fighters. Yeah, and now the Ukraine is actually attacking Russia inside Russia. Bad mistake. Bad mistake. Okay, Russia has not come at you with all they got. They have not come at you with all they got. Well, guess what? They're beginning to. Listen to this right here. 
From Feature Story News in London, I'm Stuart Smith. Ukraine says Russia carried out one of its worst ever attacks on the country on Friday, launching a barrage of drones and missiles. Dozens of people have been killed and over 100 injured, according to authorities. Julia Chapman reports. President Volodymyr Zelensky says Moscow fired 110 missiles, 87 of which were shot down by Ukraine's air defences. Those figures would make this Russia's largest aerial attack since its invasion of Ukraine. A spokesperson for Ukraine's Air Force says a wave of suicide drones was followed by missile launches from Russia. They took aim at cities including Kyiv, Odessa, Lviv, Kharkiv and Dnipro, leaving several buildings damaged and people trapped under the rubble. Ukrainian officials have been warning that Russia was stockpiling weapons for a major attack. Yeah, they've been warning them, but they've also been telling you that they can take care of those attacks. And it's becoming extremely clear that they can't. And Mm -hmm. now, uh, another thing that you might want to think about here, just for a second, because I don't think Zelensky is, they said that there was a hundred and some odd launches, right? And they they got like 85 of them down. I mean, I'm just generalizing here. Let's say it's 125 attacks and they got 85 of them that shot down. Okay. Now then, I want you to imagine this. Imagine that one of them that they didn't shoot down had a nuclear weapon on it. Yeah, not the one they missed, right? Yeah. So how how did Ukraine work out in that? Because they don't have a nuclear capacity. I don't know. But even if they blew it up in the air, this bomb still would have went off. Yeah. Yeah, and you got fallout and you got all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, in yeah, other EMP words, in other words, if you live in the Ukraine, get out because you're going to lose. The country's yeah. going to lose. I have said this. I've said this now for well over a year. And I'm not backing down on it at all. I'm a member of the U.S. Press Association. I see press reports coming in from all over the world. And the rest of the world is actually reporting truth, being that the Ukraine is losing, that their counter-offensive in 2023 was an absolute catastrophic failure. They haven't been able to do anything, and they're relying completely on other countries for all of their armaments. And eventually, they're going to uh, they're going to ask the world to please send them troops because they're going to run out of people. Russia doesn't mm-hmm. have this problem. Russia does not have this problem. They will keep going until they crush the Ukraine. So if you're there, if you're around it, get out because the Ukraine can't win. I'm going to tell you the truth where the lamestream media is going to lie to you and tell you that Ukraine has a possibility of winning. They don't. They simply no. can't win. And that I'm standing behind that again as a member of the U.S. Press Association. David, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, I know a handful of uh, Ukrainians that are friends over here, and um, they kind of have a different outlook on it. But I'll tell you my um, humble yet totally accurate opinion. Uh, okay, <laughs> I think it's called a ruse, and they're they're just doing this to you know to launder money basically. Yeah, oh, let me send a gazillion dollars over there, and somehow it comes back to the powers that be. Mm. Um, and you know they know it; they know it's all fake, and they know they don't need the money. And and it's just to me, it's just this game that they're playing uh, in order to collapse everything because out of chaos comes order. So now they can come in with a plan, and here comes the Antichrist. Hey, I'm going to make peace around the world. Oh, good. Then we have this fighting stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was, That's just the Antichrist plan. Yep. Well, uh, I'm not going to debate that one with you. I think uh, that there's mm-hmm. a, a good forecast for, for what's coming. Um, I also think that Ukraine is kind of like a staging area for the yeah. Gog-Magog war. Because I believe yeah, they, that they gotta build them all up, right? Yeah, there's gonna be a t- point coming, in my opinion, and this is personal opinion, okay? This is something that's protected by the United States Constitution, YouTube. Okay. Personal opinion. I believe that when Russia wins, that they're going to turn around and they're gonna start back into Russia. And something's gonna happen. Let's say Isaiah 17 1, just as a guess. Mm-hmm. And that the, that Damascus is obliterated, okay? That they cease to be a city, um, the city of two million, that is the oldest city on the face of the earth, ceases to exist in one night. I believe that Israel will be blamed for that, For uh, no matter if they had anything to do with it or not. Personally, I think they will have mm-hmm. a lot to do with it. But 
Whether they have anything to do with it or not, they're going to be blamed for it. And I believe that that is the hooks and the jaws that that the Bible speaks of in pulling mm-hmm. Russia down toward Israel, because Israel has, you know, they've got a like a never-ending supply of oil. Russia can't sell what they got right mm-hmm. now, it seems like. Uh, so anyway, I think it's a setup. You know, I really believe yep. that that Ukraine is just a a, a stop a stop gap, or whatever you want to call it, uh, maybe a test run. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to. Uh, what what yeah, do you think, David? I really you, think the pawns. Basically, yeah. it's a pawn, and it's it's there to set up exactly what you're talking about. They they need to do this. Uh, they need they need to set up uh, chaos and mayhem so they have an excuse to come in. Right now, if, if they did what they wanted to do now, the whole mer- world will be mad at them. Right. But now, oh, if this happened and that happened, Damascus, uh, you know, like in Isaiah, mm-hmm. all these things happen. Then they have the excuse to come down and pillage, and that's. It's clearly what they're looking for. And I think um, they're poking Israel, too, to try and get them to attack Damascus. Mm-hmm. Which because they may be like, very like, successful in making that happen, too. Yeah. Well, it's written, so it's, it's going to mm-hmm. happen. No, oh, well, yeah, the the, <laughs> so, d- the destruction of Damascus is. I'm just not sure. And, you know, now, am I missing it in the Bible? Because I, I don't see where it says that, um, you know, Israel is brought into this by destroying Damascus. You know that they're they're the ones that do it. I, I know that uh, Isaiah seventeen one says that the that the city is destroyed, but I don't see it where it says it's Israel that destroys it. Unless and now you know you've got you you got the Bible scholarship over me there, so you you tell me well, am, am, am I on track, off track, what? Yeah, I mean you can imply that the thing about it. Remember the prophecy is esoteric. And once it happens, we're going to say, oh, it was them that did it. Right. But clearly that's an event we're not going to miss. Right. <laughs> Hello. The yeah. whole world is going to know. <laughs> the whole world is going to know about that uh, one. Yeah. They're going to be able to hide so it. It's not like he actually, it, God doesn't need to say, oh, this guy's going to come from here and do all that. This is something you're not going to miss. And it's so outrageous that you're going to say, hey, this couldn't be anything else but the hand of God writing this book right. because that's near impossible to say that that long ago and have it happen today. Amen. Well, um, Russia is also, I believe, beginning to shore up its allies. Um, mm-hmm. Now, we, I, I think it's pretty obvious at this point that China is in Russia's corner that mm-hmm. uh, North Korea is in Russia's corner. Um, but how about India? India is a huge country, um, at least in population. Um, mm-hmm. And they're also a nuclear power, um, well, along with Pakistan. But India, in my opinion, again, has been playing both sides against the middle here, uh, trying to say, hey, you know, We've got no problem with Israel. We'll still do business with them or whatever. Uh, but we also have no problem with Russia, and we'll continue to do business with them. And, you know, that war that's going on between um, the Ukraine and Russia, we just, we're, we're just taking a pass on that one. You know, we, we don't want to involve ourselves in it. Russia, mm-hmm. on the other hand, is shoring up its allies. Let, let's listen to this report real quick and give you kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks, looking today at the visit to Moscow this week by India's Foreign Minister S. Jaishankar. He met Vladimir Putin on Thursday at the Kremlin and confirmed that he has invited the Russian leader to visit New Delhi at some point during the new year. India has tried to strike a neutral stance on Russia's war against Ukraine, despite Western pressure to be more critical of Putin's aggression. But analyst Rajan Menon, with the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, says the relationship between Delhi and Moscow has a long history. Well, this is a tried and true and tested relationship. The fact that he's gone back after about a year hiatus is not at all surprising. Russia and um, India have been joined very closely since, I would say, going back to the 1950s during the Cold War period. Russia was by far the most important arms supplier to India. 
there was a uh, peace and friendship treaty signed between them in August of 1971. In the post-Cold War period, there's been a change, but the fact that Jay Shankar has gone there to shore up and solidify this relationship is not the least bit surprising, nor is anyone in Washington surprised. But India's large purchases of Russian oil have angered the Biden administration and thrilled President Putin. He told the foreign minister that Russian success hinges on India's direct support economically. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. Now, did you hear that, that their success depends on India? Uh, so... Mm-hmm. Now, to my mind, that is sort of like a blackmail thing. Very oh, yeah. discreet, very, very discreet, something that most people are not going to pay attention to. But if Russia tells India, look, how you deal with us is what's going to happen with our uh, problem there with the Ukraine. If you don't support us completely, then we might have to do something with you. I mean, that's kind of the underlying message, isn't it? Or, or am I reading too much into that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pawns. They're, they're like Hamas right now. You know, the Muslim nations don't really care about Hamas. They're like, hey, let's get these clowns to go blow themselves up right. uh, so we could start a war. Um, and, and they don't even realize it. You know, and that's a sad part. Uh, they're just being used. And... And uh, all the leaders that want to hide in bunkers and keep themselves safe and their families safe are the ones telling them that they need to go be killed in order to, you know, get into paradise. Right. Well, what about you? You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all yeah. just a big farce. But I also well, wanted to, um, you look at, um, you talked about China, China, and um, there we th- we always talk about the Antichrist. Okay, the, or the pseudo Christ, the replacement Christ. Right. That's what he's like. He's going to come and pretend he's Jesus. All right. Well, if he's pretending he's Jesus, there has to be a false trinity as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there has right. to be a false father, a false son, and a false Holy Spirit. Well, we could see that in uh, Revelation in his 13 4. He said they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Mm-hmm. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who's like unto the beast? And then we see the false prophet come later and say, Hey, you have to take the number and the number of his name. Um, that's the Trinity right there. The mm-hmm. dragon, which is Satan, gave power unto the beast, who is also Satan, coming as Antichrist. And then the false prophet, who is also Satan. Coming as a false prophet, the same thing as God being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he's trying to mimic it as best he could. But there's always nations that parallel that. Okay, we talk about, you know, we see the leopard, right? The leopard was Greece. We see uh, the bear, you know, and right now, you, you know, there's some of the thing the bear is Russia. All right. And then, mm-hmm. um, but it was the the parables back then and all the kingdoms leading up to today. And there's a remnant of all those kingdoms that are still around today. Right. So we see these things, but clearly the great red dragon is China. Mm. That's Amen. their MO. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they're the biggest nation in the world. They got the most people. So clearly they would be the ones that, that have this authority to give give power to the beast if you would mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they're doing it now they're doing it with their their surveillance and their social credit score and yada 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 and they just tell people you're just going to do what we say because that's the way it is or we'll kill you mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. kind of dragonish if you ask me well i again i agree with you 100 percent. you know and i have always believed and i've been saying this for about two years that the um the thing that draws Russia down and all these other countries because it says that, you know, the, the Bible's pretty clear. This isn't a political war. It's not, right. um, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's not even a religious war, but uh, they, they're coming for, as, as the Bible says, come for booty. Have you come, have you come to pilfer from us, basically steal from us? And what Israel has underneath its ground, there is the largest supply of oil in the world. I'm, I, you know, people say that we've got it here in the United States, I don't think so. I think the biggest pool of oil remaining in the world is underneath Israel. I mean, that's personal opinion, but, that, you know, the thing is, is that... Well, it says that, actually. I'm sorry? It says that. 
Okay, so you know, the Bible it, says that Israel will have a bunch of oil under the ground. <laughs> uh, well, I, I now okay now now you're you're saying something there where I don't know if you're if you're messing with me again because you do that every now and then. No, no, no. Okay, because I don't see that. <laughs> where, where is that? Where is that in the Bible where it says it's oil for sure? Because I mean, I'm taking thing. a guess. I'm I, you know I'm well not a guess. It is an educated analysis, I guess, that if if they've got all the oil that the world needs under. Israel and Russia needs that oil in order to sell the oil to where they can build themselves up. That Russia's going to go get it. You know that they're just yep. they don't care about little Israel. They they think uh, you know they think they can go in there and take them down anytime they want to. And if if uh, if Israel's got the oil, they're going to go get it. Okay, well, go check ahead, this out. You ready for a handful yeah, I'm, of verses? I'm ready for it. Go. All right, do Deuter- do Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Uh, thirty-three twenty-four. My more blessed than my sons. That more blessed than sons is Asher. May he be favored by his brothers, and may he dip his foot in oil. <laughs> in okay. oil. Okay, yeah, I missed okay. the in uh, oil. That's who. Well, what now? More. Hang on. Well, hold on. Get, get, give me that. Give me that again. I just got Bible. Oh, Deuteronomy. Up. Okay, hold on. Thirty-three twenty-four. All right. Now this this gets even better. Okay. Okay, that's just that's just kind of an inference. Now okay. Genesis 49:25 says from the God of your father who helps you and by the almighty who blesses you with blessings from heavens above and blessings of the deep that lies beneath. Ah, uh, okay. And Deuteronomy 13 or 33:13 13, blessed of the Lord be his land and with the choice things of heaven with the dew and from the deep lying beneath. Okay. okay, and in 3319, there's a lot of stuff underneath Israel, as we talk about. The yeah. people will call uh, 3319, thy, uh, they will call peoples to the mountain. There they will offer righteous sacrifice, and they will draw out of the abundance of the seas and the hidden treasures of the sand. Well, that's pretty clear. See? Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty two twelve. The Lord alone guided him, Israel, and there was no foreign god with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, and he ate the produce of the field, and he made him suck honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. Well, okay, so All right. um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, the, oil from a flinty rock is exactly that. The, the, <laughs> There's one more. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because that's where oil comes from, is from the rock. <laughs> right, yeah, right. fossil fuels. Isaiah yeah. 45. Yeah. Maybe, is, uh, you know, Isaiah? just hit me. It just hit me. Maybe that's why AOC and all them are so intent on getting us away from fossil fuels. Maybe they're playing a part in the actual theology that we're that we're going through right now. Yeah. Oh, um, and I would... I'd, just to correct your vernacular, okay. They're not fossil fuels; they're oil from the rock, and that's been proven. There was, so Rockefeller wanted to make it scarce, so he said, "Oh, these are all fossil fuels to try and make them scarce, and say, oh, it's a limited supply." Ah, uh, okay. And then if it's a limited supply, he could jack the price and make even more gazillions of dollars. Uh, they are not you. fossil fuels. They're okay. not produced from that. They, they've proven that the oil fields replenish themselves. Well, how does that happen? Because the oil comes out of the rocks, the flinty yeah. rock. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, see, uh, you know, one thing I love about, about being on these shows with you, David, is I always learn something. Uh, and, okay. uh, you know, that that is is an education right there. But also, yeah. I had you don't never— believe me, go well, look it up. I had mm. never really looked—I uh, mean, I've read those verses that you quoted— Several times, but I never acquired it with oil. Yeah, but it didn't yeah. click, right? It's like, yeah. hey, when it did never, they put that in there? Yeah, never, <laughs> it never it, like you said, never clicked with me, but it has now. And what that does is it just basically uh, serves as, you know, corroboration of what I've been preaching for the last two years, that I truly believe that it is oil that is the driving force that brings Russia down in what we know is the Gog Magog War, them and all of the people that are shown in Ezekiel chapter 38. Okay, mm-hmm. so we get back into Ezekiel 38 again, which talks about the exact countries. And for those of you that live in the Middle East, 
Pick up a Bible, find a copy somewhere online. You can find it. Go to Bible Gateway. Find any version you want, okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 38. You're going to find the name of the countries. You're going to recognize them. They're over in your part of the world. You're going to recognize the old country names as well as you do the new country names. And when you put Mm -hmm. it together and you put it together with current events, you're going to find out that these countries that have hated each other for centuries— are now best friends and they're allies and they're ready to go against Israel, just like the Bible Same said they would. Tunnels. Just like the Bible <laughs> yep. said they would. Okay, so yep, yep. Um, uh, David, oh, we're getting down here. here to the um, to the la- to the end of the first half of the show, and I've got only have like one more report, and it's real important because it deals with Damascus and with Isaiah seventeen one and the coming mm-hmm. destruction of the largest oldest city in the world, Damascus, Syria. Isaiah 17.1 tells us that it becomes desolate, uninhabitable, a ruinous heap overnight. Um, Wow. Well, anyway, I've got some information there that says that Israel's getting closer and closer and closer to, you know, taking some uh, real measures against Damascus. We'll talk about that in the second half of the show. David, you got one minute, but I want you to talk about your site a little bit, uh, The Hidden Day. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll get back to this in the second half. But the uh, thehiddenday.com, and um, in the process, I'm going to be rebuilding that too, so you'll okay. see uh, new and exciting stuff. But uh, you can actually find uh, at Hidden Day on Rumble and on YouTube and also uh, Substack. You know, we're building out uh, a whole new uh mo if you would little new personality uh, because the lord is continually leading and guiding in new directions i uh, will be speaking we talked about here the watchmen.com here the watchmen.com right and there's a conference coming up in april we just had a show uh we're going to be talking about that and then um you know i'll be doing some other conferences even like here in uh, New York City, we'll be putting on a couple of things. But the, the ministry is growing. The Lord is really um, using my voice to you know to reach people and bring some common sense. I'm not really um, a new Christian kind of evangelist guy. I kind of teach some of the deeper things to get the existing Christians and build an apostleship and a discipleship so mm-hmm. they can actually be more effective at being a witness and an example to the world. Right. Well, um, you were talking about the conference, and so we're, we're going to have more information on that um, coming up in the first show of uh, next week, actually. So mm-hmm. uh, we'd, look forward, we'd look forward to that. We'll be going in, in depth on that. Anyway, uh, we do want you guys to stick around for the second half. We'll be back after a very short break with the second half of The Last Christian. Hang in there with us. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Simon Marks with The Year in Review. And The Year took a completely unexpected turn on October the 7th with the brazen, coordinated, deadly Hamas assault on Israel that took more than 1,400 lives and resulted in hundreds of people being seized and taken back to Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made an address to the nation in the hours after the biggest crisis his country had faced since the Yom Kippur War half a century earlier. Israel is at war. We didn't want this war. It was forced upon us in the most brutal and savage way. But though Israel didn't start this war, Israel will finish it. In the ensuing weeks, Israel has taken massive military reprisals that have, according to the Gaza Health Authority, killed more than 20,000 people, including 8,000 children. The crisis in the Middle East has posed fresh challenges to U.S. leadership on the world stage. President Biden ended the year accusing Israel of an indiscriminate bombing campaign in Gaza, but resisted pressure to call for a ceasefire and has seen public support for his handling of the crisis diminish. He also presides over a very uncertain situation in Ukraine after Congress failed to pass fresh legislation renewing military assistance to the government in Kiev. President Volodymyr Zelensky made several visits to Washington during the year and earlier in December urged the resumption of U.S. support. Ukraines haven't given up and won't give up. We know what to do and you can count on Ukraine and we hope to be able to count 
on you. President Vladimir Putin in Russia publicly claims his war aims have not changed, but privately is reported to have indicated he may be willing to negotiate a ceasefire if Kiev agrees to give up territory, a proposition that President Zelensky has described as insane. US relations with China ended the year on the mend after President Biden met President Xi on the sidelines of the APEC summit in San Francisco. India welcomed world leaders to New Delhi when Prime Minister Narendra Modi hosted the G20 summit, and BRICS, the grouping that brings together Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, announced plans to welcome six more members to the bloc. U.S. President Donald Trump became the first ever occupant of the Oval Office to face criminal indictment. More than 90 separate charges in four jurisdictions, many of them relating to his efforts to subvert the outcome of America's 2020 election. Hollywood writers went on strike for 148 days. Actors also walked off the job. Both groups settled their claims that largely resolved around revenues from streaming services. And in June, five explorers died when the Titan submersible imploded on a journey to view the wreckage of the Titanic in the waters of the North Atlantic. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. And welcome back for the second half of The Last Christian. My name is J.D. Williams here in East Texas, and joining me all the way from New York City, Mr. David Paxton. David, I, I want to get back into uh, what you were talking about with your with your site, and also we can uh, maybe touch on the fact that people might want to mark their calendar for early April. <laughs> mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. If they're interested in meeting us, uh, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. Um, but um, I've got a, another news report here that I think is something that, that we need to talk about to, that happened this week. Um, and that is an attack that occurred in Syria. Now, remember, Syria is to the north. This isn't the Gaza Strip. Okay, this is to the north of Israel. Uh, They have a border with Syria and Lebanon, I believe, right? And then to the south, the border crossing is in Egypt. Okay, well, there's a couple of different things that are happening here. Number one, they've been telling people forever to get out of Gaza, go south, go through the border crossing. Uh, Rafa, isn't it? Uh, Rafa mm-hmm. crossing down in Egypt, and I've got reports that are coming in. You're not hearing this in the mainstream media right now, uh, but again, as a member of the U.S. Press Association, I can tell you I get these reports. And Israel is warning Egypt to withdraw their forces from that crossing. Get out of there. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a pretty good indicator that Israel intends to do some operations down there. And they don't want Egyptian soldiers to be killed. So I would take that as a really good hint not to even go to Rafa. Go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, if you've waited this long and you had an opportunity to leave and you waited this long, it, I hope you haven't waited too long. But anyway, this is all gearing up because, again, what Israel has just done is not an attack in Gaza. It is an attack toward the north and in Syria. There was an attack. It killed. Now, get this. And, again, I don't know if you're going to hear this in the mainstream media or not, but this is the truth, okay? Um, The Israelis have killed 11 senior Iranian military officers and also injured a top advisor to Damascus. These are all Iranians. They're not Syrians. They're not Russians. You know, they're not Hamas. They're Iranians. Okay. So uh, Tehran is accusing Israel of killing their senior IRGC commander in Syria this week. Um, And Israel is forcing uh, Hamas money transfer agencies. In other words, they're targeting these people that are doing money. Okay, transferring money mm-hmm. left and right. Okay, the uh, an Israeli airstrike on Damascus airport had reportedly killed nearly a dozen senior Iranian military officials, which one expert told Fox News would prove Israel's ability to maintain a multifaceted defense of the region. Now, the quote here says, "While there is no independent confirmation of Guard Corps names or ranks." 
the IRGC has long seen Syria as a critical regional hub to protect power into the eastern uh, Mediterranean and connect its constellation of proxies called the Axis of Resistance. Now, that's according to Benam Ben Talablu, a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Um, he also said it should come as a shock to no one that Guard Corps elite are operating there, especially amid a regional war, which they di- are directing far away from their own soil. In other words, they're saying Iran is in charge. They're the ones calling the shots. Israel knows that, and Israel just took them out. They took out their leadership, okay? We would do the same thing. Now, any mm-hmm. country would do the same thing. But this is all happening now. Remember, the focus of the world's on Gaza. It's not on mm-hmm. Hezbollah, but uh, Hezbollah's to, to the north. They're a lot bigger than Hamas. I, I'm going to continue to say it until somebody proves me wrong. There's a three-front war going on in Israel right now, and Israel has just upped the ante with the, with the hit there in, in the north. The Iranians are going to have to do something. They're going to have to regroup, put new people in, do whatever they need to do. But I think it's, I think it's a sign that uh, Isaiah 17 is a lot closer than we think. Uh, your impressions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's going to come out of nowhere because I mean, if if you read it, you can see it's like, hey, it's going to be um, just normal, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, let's even look it up. Let's just read it. Okay. So it, it says, um, "Burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, well, and it shall be a ruinous heap." The cities are R R R. We got to find our, where R R R is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they shall be for their flocks, which lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress will, shall also cease uh, f- from Ephraim and the kingdom of Damascus, the remnant of Syria, and the glory of the children of Israel, Lord of hosts. And the day shall come to pass, the glory of Jacob shall be made, and then the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. So it talks about um, basically it's just going to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, Without warning. And that's, so the the question becomes, well, why didn't they get out? Because they weren't warned, you know? And th- that's really the thing here. So it's going to be all this, and they think they're going to be safe, but then all of a sudden, then here comes that destruction for whatever one reason yeah. or another. Yeah. So that's just interesting. Yeah. Why you know, wouldn't I, they know? If we can surmise that now, why wouldn't they know? Well, uh, I don't know. Do, does it does it specifically say they don't know? Um, and I'm, I'm I'm asking that question uh, as an honest question because I'm I'm wondering if it's sort of like what's going on in Gaza right now, where they know what's going on, but they can't get out because the terrorists won't let them out. I mean, is is could it be something like that, or is it? really clear in scripture that you know there's just no warning at all well i don't think they believe it and that's really the thing i mean if you um if anybody's on social media anywhere all you see is the uh, muslims and the the, uh, palestinians even though they're not really palestinians Mm -hmm. they um they're putting up these videos of how they're winning yeah so the idea is that and sadly, we all know the truth, okay? Mm-hmm. But their own people, they're so brainwashed, and they want to believe that so bad that they believe it. Mm-hmm. So they're just kind of lulled into this false sense of security. And that's going to be it. They're not going to leave. Um, it it just, it, they won't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I... Yeah, I, uh, I, I mean, yeah I, that's, that's more in line with what I'm thinking, you know, that they see the... They see it's going to happen, or maybe not. You know, not the extent. I'm not. I'm not saying that they are going to know that the whole city is going to go away overnight. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, but I'm they thinking don't believe that's that they that they're going to know that there's an imminent attack. Maybe. I mean, I, again, I'm just you know I'm just speculating on this one. Okay, because I really don't know. Mm-hmm. But because um, he talked. I mean, there's the burden of other places too. There's the burden of, of Moab. Yeah. There's a bur- burden of Egypt. So it mm-hmm. talks about each one of them. And mm-hmm. um, 
let me see a ruinous heap let me see here uh let me or isaiah 10 9 let's see what that one says oh no it's damascus and but yeah i mean it, it says basically overnight mm -hmm. this is going to happen right yeah and I, I i mean i see it coming and you know there's a big part of me that wants to say israel does it but yep. there's just as big a part of me that says, well, maybe not, but they're going to be blamed for it. You know, I, I don't know which is true. I mean, I really don't. Um, I, to my knowledge, the Bible doesn't say that it, Israel is the one that does this. I don't know. Again, I, I, got, you know, to, I got to go to you because you're the Bible it scholar doesn't here. Say anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't have anybody. That's the yeah. real thing. Yeah, and you know, so that leads you to believe right that maybe that's uh, like a misfire. I'm, I'm going back about a year here. Okay, to, to, you know what wouldn't surprise me either. What's that? If they try and launch their own and it just falls on themselves. Exactly. <laughs> you know that. Exactly. You know yep. what? Uh, about a year ago, I went into different theories. I guess, and mm -hmm. one of those theory. Well, one theory is that Israel does it. You know, that they, uh, for whatever reason, they find out, let, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that they find out that there's armaments inside Damascus proper that are mm -hmm. like nuclear, you know, that, that could affect them directly. And they are not going to take any chances with it, and they take care of the problem. They take Damascus off the map, okay? Mm -hmm. That's one scenario. Another scenario is Iran tries to launch something from their area or their proxy or whatever, and the thing, you know, the missile shoots off, and it doesn't hit Israel. It hits Damascus and takes them out. And then another, another theory is that they have it in Damascus. They shoot it. It goes up and comes straight down again. That's happened in, mm -hmm. that's happened in Gaza a dozen times. In the well, last, every time they fight, they do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that's very possible. And then, of course, the 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 big one that nobody can dispute is God could do it Himself. Yep. So you know, uh, you you got all these different theories, and not one of them can I say is is the one that's going to work. And I can't even say that any one of them is going to happen. It might be something totally else. I mean, I don't know. What what what's your impression, David? Yeah, I mean that. We don't know, but like we said before, the, the one thing that's crystal clear is it will be destroyed overnight. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Once we see that, then we'll know who did it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even if they blow themselves up, they're going to blame Israel anyway. So right. Exactly. I have I have said that from the beginning. You know, because not. I mean, there may be peace treaties in place between Israel and Egypt, and uh, I don't. I mean, there was a bunch done there in the last months of the Trump administration with the. With the Accords, um, Abraham Accords, okay, and I can't even tell you what countries have peace with Israel right now, supposedly, and which don't. Uh, but I can tell you this: none of them really care about Israel, yeah. you know, especially us right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, nobody cares. It's what what can Israel give us? What can we get from them? You know, everybody mm -hmm. cares about that, but as far as them even being a country or having the right to exist, nobody outside of Israel cares about that, and there's not going to be a tear lost by, uh, by any of the countries that surround Israel should something really happen to them. We know it won't, but you know, if Israel was to be wiped out or whatever, the, the, all the countries that are around them, they wouldn't, I don't even know if they'd report it other than, you know, we're free. You know, Palestine is Palestine now. We don't have to worry about Israel anymore. I don't think anybody, yep. there's not going to be any, you know, they don't care. They really don't care about Israel. So when Israel yeah, comes they, under I mean, attack, nobody cares. Go ahead. They make their goals clear, too. They just they want to wipe them off the face of the planet. Right. I mean, how how can anybody, you, know, you got the United Nations, you got all these people, and they talk about all this stuff. They got they got gay rights. They got, you know, uh, women's rights. They got all mm -hmm. these different things. Mm -hmm. But no one says a word about wiping an entire nation off the no. planet. They're like, From oh, the yeah, that's river fine. to the sea. From the river yeah. to the sea. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, it's, it's like, what is wrong with it? <laughs> Hello? Uh, 
well you know, what um, if you said that even even about like you know some obscure little tribe that still lives in jungle days like in africa there's tribes that are there that have nothing to do with modern day society well god forbid you go in and say hey i want to destroy all of them oh it'd be a big uproar the whole world oh, will be on your man. back yeah well but, you know you it, it's just unbelievable. basically any issue you know mm -hmm. it's going to have its proponents and uh you know it but when it comes to Israel, nothing counts. It doesn't matter. Yep. Um, you know, they've got more more resolutions and sanctions against them from the United Nations than any nation on earth. You know, uh, I, maybe I missed it, but I don't see a world condemnation of Hamas for um, attacking Israel uh, combined with sanctions against the terrorists themselves including mm -hmm. uh, warrants for their arrest to go for the world court. Maybe I missed it, but I don't remember seeing anything like that. Do you? Do you? No, I don't see it from anywhere. I'm looking now. There's nothing. Yeah. So, not but, even one. But with um, Netanyahu, for instance, uh, I know that Turkey said that he needs to be tried for war crimes. And I believe that there's um, other countries that are that are saying the same thing as far as the Israeli prime minister, that he's got to be held accountable for war crimes for defending his country. I don't get it, but that's, you know. Well, it's, <sighs> what are you going to say? How, it, you can't. That, no, that's that's it, why it makes we no live sense. in this crazy world. Yeah, it, it's like it, it, we're trying to make sense of the devil's reasoning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not going to work. Well, and, you know, that's, I think, the main thing that, that we need to take away from this is that, you know, this is the devil's work. And it's becoming more and more clear every day. And again, my big fear for my country that I love, the United States of America, I love my country. I really do. But if we turn against Israel, I turn against America. I'll mm -hmm. make it, I, you know, I will be. I don't think it's the, the country like you're talking about is, is we the people right. as opposed to the usurpers in chief that we have right now that are trying to take over our country. Right. So I think it's, we should be clear on, listen, we love the, we, the people of America, right. because we come from all backgrounds and all places of the world and come together to live as one. And the, the problem is they're trying to take that away from us. Right. So the, right. the corporation that is in power now is, uh, the ones that we're not happy with. Yeah. Well, you know, nowadays you have to have a celebrity voice or something like that. And there's no shortage of village idiots to take up the uh, banner of the evil one. No shortage of them. He'll never run out of idiots. Okay. One of them plays yeah. for the Los Angeles Lakers that I love. And I haven't been able to watch the Los Angeles Lakers in years because of the fact they've got a village idiot on their team. It's supposed to be the guy. Okay, well, I got no use for him, and I won't spend my money or my TV time watching a village idiot. Okay, and you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've, I'm very, very careful. I never like to mention people's names like LeBron James. I never, you know, I don't, I don't like no, doing that. So, do that. So I would never do that on the show. Okay, so anyway, um, what's going to happen is that Isaiah 17 one is going to happen. Damascus is going to be mm -hmm. wiped out. Now, whether or not that happens before or after the rapture, I don't know. Um, but it's because God doesn't tell me in the Bible. He doesn't tell me which happens first, does he, David? No, no. He just gives a bunch of burdens. I mean, that whole Isaiah gives lists them out. Isaiah is a big book. Yes, it is. Burden of this, burden of this, burden of this, burden of this. But I really, I wanted to head back to uh, oil in Israel, if we could. Okay, yeah. So, um you know, we talked about that oil out of the flinty rock. And, you know, we somehow we're, we think we're so wonderful that we're the only ones who know about, uh, you know, crude oil, what they call it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they knew it back then because sometimes it bubbles up and they've mm -hmm. used it. Matter of fact, they, even Noah says pitch. Well, pitch was a, like tar. <laughs> mm, okay. Hello. So the, the tar came up, you know, the oil came up and it kind of settled and got hard and they made tar and that's what he pitched the boat with mm -hmm. inside and out, by the way, because it was meant to preserve it 
because that's going to be a proof when they find it again. He says, oh, you don't believe in the flood? Here's the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah so science, is already, uh, science is already kind of proven that one. They, they don't like to admit it, but they've, they've pretty much proved it already. Yeah, that's the reason you don't see it brought up too much anymore. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, you know, it talks about the hidden treasures of the sand. And then uh, the one we didn't get to is Isaiah 45, 3. It says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. So mm -hmm. clearly, if he's going to do that and pull the, this, all these verses, that said they're going to pull oil from underneath and treasures of the sand and mm -hmm. all these different things then you're going to expect that the devil's going to try and trick people into thinking that it was, it's him that has it because he came by with false Christ. You know how many Jesuses there were before Jesus came? <laughs> Jesus? No, there was a no bunch clue. Of them. <laughs> how many? Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Yeah, and then I they bet. got, you know, <laughs> yeah. And then you got Horace was born of a virgin. And, and I mean, they got so many stories of how all these these yeah. pagan gods were all born, and which is why we got December 25th, by the way, because yeah. they were all born on, they, to bring in after the winter solstice. Um, well, it's and, amazing to me that, you know, uh, all these Bible stories, there's, there's always going to be a, one that's kind of like it that's in yep. another book, okay? But yep. the one that's kind of like it is usually either completely fake or it's blown out of proportion. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, it's all just garbage. Yeah. Well, just he has to come garbage. and he said he'll be so close to the gospel that it would deceive, if possible, even the elect. Right. Because remember, right. he's, he's not, he's not going to come with horns. And, oh, he's going to come and pretend he's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got a lot of cults. But yeah. if you're truly elect, you're going to understand that, you know, like like um, the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, they're like, oh, we believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. OK, <laughs> so they have a lot of and it's the nice people and they do all this stuff. So they look really nice and they're all cleaned where up. On the outside. Is it, where is it in Scripture where Jesus says, I'm the last one, I'm the last prophet? Where is it? Oh, uh he is the last Adam. Okay. We know um, that. Yeah. The, the reason I'm asking that question is because so many say, you know, well, I'm the I'm the new prophet, like John Smith, for instance. I'm the new prophet. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, but, you mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it, he was. His blood was shed once for all. Right. And you know, you know and the reason the reason uh, Johnny had a problem is because he was he was in his local church, and his brother died. And he went to the church and said, hey, can we pray him out of purgatory? And they're like, there's no such thing. He's dead. No. He's in hell. He was an evil guy. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like that idea. So he kind of went nuts, think, you know, trying to follow the idea that somehow his brother is, you know, in, in hell heaven. for eternity. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. drove him yeah. nuts. So he started to make up his own new doctrine. And he came up with all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like he met, you know, this, this angel came and gave him this giant golden book that he memorized and lost somehow. Lost, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I lost it. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I lost it. Oh, scripture for the ages. Oh, but I misplaced it. it maybe it's under the couch. Let me yeah. look. Well, you know, that uh, so, uh, the, the, the funny thing about that is, you know, when I said, well, you know, well, Moses had to, Ten Commandments broken. Yeah, he sure did, and God gave it to him again, didn't he? So yeah, where, he made where, another one. So where's where's old Smithy's stuff? Where's it at? You know, and, yeah, on, and they're on, still around. We're gonna get, on we're gonna see those again. On top of that, on top of that, how many times has the Bible been amended with? Oh, you know, this is version two, version three. You know, you know what I'm saying? There, there might yeah, be, yeah. The Book of Mormon has changed a lot. Yeah, I and mean, they, think, they had to change it so because you know, of polygamy and all that stuff. You know, they had to change it. Yeah, go ahead. They change well. They change that. They change. They they clearly says in the Mormon doctrine that uh, you're you have dark skin because you're cursed, <laughs> and and that's that's their mo. Yeah, right. I wonder how that goes so over with those communities. Yeah, it's only uh, because they don't know they don't know the real Jesus. They claim, right. oh, it's Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. No, it's not the Jesus Christ. Okay, it's another one. Same thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. They, mm -hmm. um, the Mormons think that Jesus and Satan 
were brothers born born of God. Oh yeah, he's the son of God. Yeah, they mean you know born like an actual son as opposed to God the son, and that they were brothers, and one's a bad brother and one's a good brother, mm -hmm. you know, and you know we got that whole thing throughout yin and yang and that's the same idea oh it's good versus evil no it's not good versus evil it's good and then there's evil that's out there and god's going to get rid of it there is no versus <laughs> um but the main crux of crux of of what is uh who christ is he had to had to had to had to be god who became a man or right. else he could not pay off your sin debt Right. It's a contract. And God would not be a just legal God if he said, Oh, I'll just I'll just go ahead and forgive your sins. No, there had to be payment for it. Mm -hmm. That's why he came as the son and said, I will become the man so I can make the payment for you. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously being God, so he's good infinite, so he can pay for the sins of all mankind. So he had to become a man. If he, if you think he didn't become a man, and and like he's just he's not God or in one thing, your sins aren't paid for. It's as simple right. as that. So you're gonna have to pay for them. As nice as you are, mm -hmm. come dress up and smell good and and do wonderful things for <laughs> you know a hundred years while you're yeah. here. Yeah. Guess what? You're burning hell. Right. Yeah. Depart from me. Never knew you. I I don't I yep. I don't that that's something I don't want to hear. That is something I don't want to hear. I will do everything in my power to help someone else who says, "Oh, I'm not afraid of your God." No, you might not be, yeah. and there's not any reason for you to be. You know, not any physical not reason right now. today for you to be afraid of him. But Ew, you're going to die like everybody time. else. You know, someday you're gonna you're gonna be looking. You know, you're going to be right there, and God's going to look at you, and He's going to say, "Depart from me, I never knew you." And your next destination is your eternal destination. And it's called hell, and there's no escape yeah. from it, and there's no second chances. And you can avoid that by simply telling the Lord, "Look, I know I'm a sinner. I know Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. Father, please forgive me of my sins. I know He rose from the grave after three days, just like He said He would. I know He sits at Your right hand, and I know that wrath is coming. That thing that they call the tribulation, I know it's coming, and I want no part of it. I don't want to be around for it, Father. Please, I, I ask for Your forgiveness. I promise to follow You all the remaining years of my life. And if you are that last Christian, if you're that last person to accept Jesus Christ before the rapture of the church, the next face you see is Jesus Christ, and you'll see me and David and everybody else, all Christians, living and dead. We'll meet you in the air. We'll celebrate that moment with you. We'll go to heaven. We'll watch what happens on the earth, and then we'll come back with Jesus. We'll be looking at the butt end of the horses. We won't be we won't be seeing them coming at us. We'll be with him. We'll be coming back, and we'll take care of this problem that we call the earth once and for all. Okay, uh, David, we've reached the end of this uh, this edition of Last Christian, and. We next week we we've got a very special presentation in the very first uh, first show of the week. I'm not going to give it away. I'm just not. I'm going to tell you people you need to tune in. You're not going to want to miss this one. I promise you. So make sure that you tune into the next edition. If you ever want to see one of these things um, in video form, go to www.lastchristian.net. That's www.lastchristian.net. If you follow us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button, the like button, do some comments. Help us break through on YouTube and break their analytics that have been holding us down for two years. We're big everywhere else except YouTube. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm not saying there's anything funny going on, but there's something funny going on. Okay? So, mm. anyway, um, David, I uh, appreciate you, as always. And uh, we do hope that all of you will join us for every episode of Last Christian. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you better get it done quick. Because everything that needs to be done before the rapture has been done. It is the next thing on the prophetic agenda. And we want you there with us. So until next time, everybody, good night and God bless. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here and at www.lastchristian.net until the trumpet sounds.
Are you prepared for an emergency or disaster? Because it's not a matter of if, but when. Don't find yourself saying, <laughs> When the storm rolls in, my time to find a pet-friendly evacuation center will have run out. The scorching heat wave will leave me powerless to cool my insulin. I'll face a hurricane without meds. Now that's a tough pill to swallow. Let's prepare so we all have a better story to tell. Get started at ready.gov slash older adults. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.